the Beach FM Business Lunch Show, brought to you by Placemakers, Kapiti and Orofenua. Together, we're building New Zealand. Welcome back to the Business Lunch Show on Beach FM 106.3. Let's talk books now. Let's welcome into the show from Moby Dickens Bookshop. It is Brent Smith. G'day, Brent. G'day, Damien. How you going, man? Yeah, very, very good. How are you doing at this time? Yeah, good. Good as gold, thank you. Excellent, mate. Excellent. Well, first and foremost, what we like to do on the show is get to know the people that we're talking to. So in your own words, how, how long you've been around and and what was the how did how did your journey lead to having your own bookstore? Yeah, yeah. Um we've got to go back to two thousand and eleven, uh, which was when uh Lauren and I first um took the bookshop over. Um it was kind of one of those things that we'd talked about um, as you do, uh, for a number of years about owning our own small business. And um, Lauren's a teacher, so she's got a real passion for children's books. Um, and it just so happened, uh, you know, we moved up the coast a few years uh, before uh, 2011, and it was just funny how it all panned out. Things just started falling in place, and the bookshop became available, and one thing led to another. And before we knew it, um, 1st of September of 2011, uh, we were the proud owners of a small independent bookshop at Paraparan Beach. Fantastic stuff, mate. What about you? What was your background? Your wife being a teacher, obviously there's a fascination with books there, but what, what was your, your background? Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm actually, uh, my background's engineering, uh, oh. right from school. Um, I did an apprenticeship as a fitter welder and so my early days were very much um, an engineering background. But then I went into sales in uh, my early 20s. I was very fortunate to have a, a very good manager um, who taught me a lot and gave me the opportunity as a young half Maori boy from Wainuiomata. Mata. <laughs> um, and it was great. And it sort of went from there. I enjoyed sales because I enjoyed the interacting um, with customers and so forth. And it kind of went from there. I, I've been in and out of a number of industries, but... <laughs> The background has always been, I guess, uh, that sort of sales side of things. And, uh, yeah, I enjoy it. So I've been very lucky. Excellent. Well, I know uh, another link to why I knew him. I love it. Um, I know a good salesman knows his products. Do you have to sit there and read all the books yourselves or uh, the synopsis on the back will do? Yeah, it, there's a lot of books here, um, a lot of books. Uh, what I try to do, um, because often I'm the one that's inputting the stock when it comes in, and there'll be a particular book or books that will catch my eye. And uh, during a quiet time or uh, on a Saturday, um, I might just step aside there and uh, just take in a few books. Um, from time to time, if time allows us on a Saturday, Lauren will actually grab a book at random and read it to me in the shop. Oh, wow. Um, yeah, and it doesn't bother her if there's a customer there or if they're just browsing in the shop there. She'll just read the book to me because, one, it just means that I can get an understanding of it, and two, that's just her teacher side of it coming into it as well. <laughs> I love it. She doesn't make you sit on the mat with your legs crossed, does she? Not yet, no. Not yet. <laughs> hey, mate, we've seen, um, seen a big change since uh, 2011, you know, the introduction of uh, better tablets, you know, iBooks, etc. So how does the introduction of technology in the book world, how, how has that affected business? Yeah, I guess if I'm honest with you, Damien, um, online purchasing, um, I guess, has had an impact on, on not just your small independent players, but I guess your bigger ones as well. And we, we're not really an online seller. Um, we, we certainly take inquiries online, et cetera, um, but we don't proactively sort of uh, involve ourselves in, in online um, sales. Um, we're very much sort of more looking after the, the uh, customers that come through the door um, and so forth. Um, technology has also had an impact on how people are using postal services or payment services, bill pay services that we do. So we've kind of had to adjust to a certain extent, um, but some of the technology that's currently available uh, in some of those services, in particular bill pay services, um, are still a little draconian. Um, I'll give you a good example, Damien. Um, a lot of people now are getting their bills on their mobile phones. Yeah. So what we're having to do is, uh, because we can't scan the required barcode uh, that's normally on a paper statement, we're often having to load it manually from their phone. Um, oh, wow. And that's okay. Uh, you know, you, you just learn to adjust when things like that are presented to you. But uh, yeah, maybe a little bit behind the eight ball, but uh, we do as best as we can to keep up with the um, rapid changing times. 
Well, that's uh, that was actually my next question. With a rep, uh, an industry ch- that changing all the time, and with everything happening that in this world, h- how do you keep up to the latest, or or do you have a status quo that um, you just kind of live by? Yeah. I- <laughs> I guess we're quite structured in how we work. Some could say that we're a little old-fashioned. Um, I don't make any apologies for that. Um, I'm, I'm quite proud of the fact that we're old school. Love um, and I think a lot of our customers can relate to that. But you've got to keep in your eyes on um, what's going on around you because our environment is changing so quickly. Um, and as I mentioned before, we, we attempt to try and stay on top of things as best as we can. There's always room for improvement. I don't hear what anyone says. Um, you know, you're never at your maximum. And so really between myself and Lauren and the team as well, we just try to keep an eye on what's happening, what's ahead of us, and with support from our suppliers. Um, yeah, we attempt to do the best that we can anyway. Fantastic, mate. Well, the real question, well, not the real question, one of the questions that uh, always pops up on the show is uh, COVID. So how was that time for you? The, was it a time to regroup, re- uh, refresh yourself, um, or was it uh, a bit different for you guys? Yeah, a bit of a double-sided coin, actually, Damien. Um, if I'm honest with you, I enjoyed the break. Um, it was nice to have some uh, quality time at home with Lauren and, yes. and our little dog, Spud. Um, <laughs> from a business perspective, uh, it, it, it was tough. Uh, you know, we were down for nearly two months because we couldn't operate under Level 4 or Level 3. Um, so a small independent business with no income for nearly two months was pretty tough. And saying that, um, really appreciated the um, wage subsidy uh, that the government put in place. It meant that we could continue to pay the team uh, while we were closed. And since we kicked back in, back in, I think it was May, we've now just tried to just regain that ground that we lost. And, you know, we're doing okay. We're, We're doing okay. We're doing a lot better than some others, and I'm very grateful for that. Absolutely. Hey, mate, it is a tricky time this week with uh, it popping its ugly head again. Um, Today, rumour has it there's a case in Tokoro, so it might be getting closer to us. Have you put any things in place for what might be next, or is it it wait and see as it comes for you? I guess the fact that we've already been through this uh, earlier in the year, Damien, um, we were pretty prepared if it was going to roll out again. Um, I was of the mindset, very much what uh, the Ministry of Health and the government were saying, that it wasn't a matter of if, it was when. Uh, I think we were all hoping it wasn't going to happen, but the reality of it is that it was. Um, so when, when we got the uh, heads up that it was time to roll out um, Alert Level 2, we put it in place pretty quick because we'd already been there. Um, I, I'm the same as everybody else. Um, yeah, a little on edge, a little anxious because we don't really know what's going to happen. Um, but the reality of it is what will be will be. Uh, if they announce tonight um, that things change and um, or things remain the same under Level 2, we'll just learn to adapt uh, and get on with it because at the end of the day, we have no control over it. We've just got to get on with it, um, manage it as best as we can. And uh, the team here, we kind of we kind of adopted that motto of you know when it happens, keep those two kings and two key things in mind. Uh, one is to be kind to one another, and and the other, of course, is uh, to be patient with one another. So I, I think the fact that we've been down this road before helps. Um, but yeah, not not ideal. But then this is an ideal times at the moment. So. Well said, mate. Well said. Well, lastly, you, you've had the store for. You know, nine years now, uh, coming up to September the 1st. You've had uh, digital age change. You've had a, a, a global pandemic. But uh, what keeps you smiling and keeping you current, turning up to work every day for the business? Yeah, good question, Damien. Um, nine years, yeah, gosh, it's gone so quickly. Um, can't believe it uh, until, you know, someone brings it to, to our attention. Um, but, you know, for me, um, first and foremost, it's the people that I work with. We've got a great team here, myself, Lauren, uh, Kath, Lorraine, Sarah, just a great bunch of people to work with. Um, and then secondly, we're very fortunate that we've got a, a very loyal and supportive um, customer base. Uh, it's a real pleasure um, being down here at the beach and looking after everyone. And that's really what motivates me to, to come to work every day and, and try to be the best that I can and the team to be the best that they can as well. It, everything we do in the shop pretty much is process. 
what makes the difference day to day is the people that come in and see us. Well said, my man. Well said. Well, lastly, where can the people find you? How can they get in touch? Yeah, absolutely. So we're down in Parapara Umu Beach. We're at 17 Seaview Road. And if you're looking for us down Seaview Road, if you know where the four square is across the road, we're just opposite them and a little bit down towards the corner of the intersection of McLean Street. Fantastic. Thank you so much for your time today, Brent. Go well, my man. Uh, we'll catch up soon. Thanks very much to you, Damon, and to Beach FM as well.